Well, it has finally rained. Thank goodness we needed it so bad. Um, yeah, we were pretty much, uh, what, like over a month of no rain. Yes, we, we said we need to get one of those rain gauges so that we can tell. But uh, I was thinking I left the little bucket on top of the thingy. We should go and check see and how see how much there. rain is in it so that we know roughly what came down. Because uh, everything is certainly greened up a little bit, which oh, is yeah. quite we nice. Had, uh, we had a pretty good amount of rain overnight and most of this morning into this afternoon. So... Considering apparently this was like the driest May on Ever? record for oh, a long, it was, quite, quite it a while. It was scary. Anyways. We were very concerned. Uh, to be honest, it has, I think, led to something that we're a little bit disappointed about. Um, I One think, factor anyways. I, I think we have lost all of our apples. Um, I don't think we're getting very many apples yeah. this year. No, I think, uh, I think we're going to take you back just to have a little look at our sorrow. So as we were mentioning... This was completely dry before we got the rain. So, so we're just going to test it. Let's flip this way, it's cleaner. And see how much we got. Not bad. A little over a centimeter or three quarters of an inch. So, not super scientific, but still, that's pretty decent for... Uh, well, we were supposed to get a little over a centimeter, so they didn't lie. For once, the weatherman was right. There's a brief digression, looking at this uh, bed of... Uh, radishes and carrots which Alex planted on Sunday yeah so not very long ago there's uh, radishes already starting to come up so these are cherry bell radishes so we shall see I see more in the center row there they definitely work really well in the uh, gel the gel method oh there's quite a few more here so they're coming up quite well and more so at least that uh, that's encouraging that means that uh, despite the dry it's working <laughs> <laughs> so if you remember back, oh I don't know, quite a few videos ago, tree uh, here, which is kind of right by our garden, was uh, which you can see is uh, looking pretty decent. It got a pretty good soaking. Um, but this tree was just covered in in apple blossoms, so it's a little bit hard to see maybe. But uh, this bit here, this right tree. Here. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got some down, but you can see up there. There's actually quite a few apples starting I can see a bunch there and there and we almost cut this tree down because last year it was it looked like death done over so this big tree which you can see is a good size apple tree like we say was pretty much half dead last year actually a third of it actually broke off but it's looking pretty vigorous this year but the interesting thing with this one is it's located closer to the house and we almost have like Different two, zone. Yeah, it's almost like two different microclimate. We'll, uh, we're going to go take a look at the back and the main chunk of apples. And from what we looked at the other day, it's not looking promising. And as we come through to the pastures, you can see uh, this pasture here, pasture one, is looking quite lush. And I guarantee the rain we got today is going to make it grow even faster. It's almost ahead of the sheep, to be honest. And you can see the apple trees are all looking quite good. They're in excellent shape. But uh, we'll go a little closer to a couple here and show you what we think is going to be the case for the apple outlook for the fall. This is the first one that we're uh, kind of looking at. And you can see, really zoomed in, so right above my blurry finger, there are actually a few apples on this one. It's a little hard to see them all. but Not nearly what was on them last year, but no, there's a few but there is... some places on them. There is some apples, so we should get at least a few. To be honest, most of those are kind of in the midsection. I don't see a whole lot more, but there's some hiding. So we'll see. This was one of the trees that was absolutely loaded. And although we might not be getting a lot of apples this year, we do have a pretty good crop of sheep. All of our lambs are kind of all in behind the bigger ones here, but they are all doing amazing. We were commenting just having the two pastures, and we haven't even gotten them into pasture one yet, how much bigger they are this year, even though they're still quite young. And uh, just kind of how good of shape everybody's in is uh, pretty amazing. So it's, uh, it's nice to have at least some things up and working. <laughs> Well, that first apple tree looked a little bit promising, but so far, I mean, we're not doing like a 
close close inspection but just kind of walking by the trees and looking at them there's uh, there's no fruit showing on very many of these this little one my blurry finger does have a couple at the top but not much compared to the number of blossoms that were here one of the things we're finding back here is they are getting eaten by caterpillars as well yeah a little bit the nice part of it is we do have uh, a lot of birds that do eat the tent caterpillars which is handy you can hear some of them singing in the background we've got uh, brown thrashers great cat birds we actually have northern mockingbirds which for us is not a super common bird and we do have both species of uh, cuckoo the yellow billed and black billed cuckoo so well it's not apples but one thing that we have noticed coming back here is we have a lot of common blackberries quite a few and we actually was it last spring we mowed quite a bit bit of these pastures down in preparation of using them as pasture space and this year of course, these all came back up last year because we didn't get it fenced and didn't have animals on it. And uh, like this one here, hypothetically, has got a lot of fruit potential. A lot of fruit potential on it. But when you look over here, there's like half an acre of blackberry bush. We have a lot of them, and we will admit, long term, we probably won't let all of this persist. We're really toying with the idea of how to break up the pastures and keep some of the blackberries because if we fence this for sheep, they will eat them. And you won't get the, uh, the second year canes because you won't get the first ones come up. Regardless, this year we have a plethora of blackberry bushes. So as we've been kind of poking around the apples, the apple harvest may not be super fantastic, but the blackberry harvest should be amazing. A couple things to think about here is the first, apple trees don't necessarily produce heavy heavy crops every year so I'm sure in the plethora of apple trees that we have on the property we'll still be able to find some apples but I don't think it's going to shape up for a particularly heavy harvest like we had last year a couple reasons why the apples may not be as productive this year as in, in years past well one obviously they do go in cycles they don't they don't produce a million apples every year and that's something to just consider with apples and any and other fruit as well. They, they don't all produce heavy crops all in one year. We started, it was quite warm this spring. And the apples actually were, we would have said behind. They didn't respond by bursting out into to blossoms. They pretty much blossomed at the, the regular time, which is interesting to note. And basically what happened is we, uh, we had a cold snap, relatively speaking, then the apples blossomed out, so they didn't get frosted, but there really wasn't any pollinators. Like you came back here and there wasn't a lot of bees. There wasn't many of the bumblebees that we normally have. They're out now, uh, <laughs> a little bit late for the apples. The, even the birds that usually take advantage of it, like the Baltimore Orioles, and the, we get another one called Tennessee Warbler. Doesn't breed here, but when they come through, they're often in the apple trees like crazy, drinking the nectar from the flowers. So. Stuff just wasn't super well timed. Now, of course, these apples aren't native to our area. They're pretty naturalized, I would say, but uh, it still just goes to show you little changes in your local climate can uh, have some pretty big ripple effects on uh, crops. Well, we haven't made it too far through it all. But pretty much every tree you see here, with a few exceptions, uh, there are a couple of cherries, but not many. You can see the uh, pasture fence. Every single one of these trees is an apple tree. And uh, prognosis is not looking fantastic yeah. for apples this year. Of the 386 apple trees that are on the property, we haven't gone and checked every one. We haven't gone to the back. But um, of the, say, 30-40% of the ones that we've actually walked up to here and looked at, of that, I would say probably 90% of them have next to nothing on them. Or nothing um, visible. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that there's not some hidden in there somewhere. And you know, those couple that are hidden there will grow really nice because they're not going to have competition. But uh, it's definitely a case that uh, this year the apples are not there. So good thing we're going to have a good berry year. So here's another tree that has a couple. 
And one thing about uh, apples, and a lot of fruit actually, is uh, they can abort. So because apples can abort, some of these trees uh, shortly after flowering may have actually had more apples on them, but they've since aborted a, uh, the bulk of anything that may have developed from the looks of it. So I think it's kind of a trifecta this year. We had some sort of semi-weird weather, which sort of set a bunch of things slightly off from one another, which is not that uncommon anymore. <laughs> There's lots of other examples where that happens. You know, even a week can make a big difference uh, when you're talking about your your blooms and your bloom set and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we did have that bit of a drought, which is completely not normal for May. So we kind of went into May or late um, April in pretty decent uh, shape and then basically had a month long no rain in the spring. <laughs> so aborting does seem like another logical uh, outcome. And then obviously the pollinator thing, which kind of goes back to the timing. They just, there wasn't pollinators. Uh, no, we didn't do a comprehensive catalog of everything that came to the trees, but normally it's just loaded and uh, it, it wasn't. And a lot of that just seems to be timing too, because like we say, even looking at the larger pollinators like the bumblebees, they weren't there, but they are now out. So anything that's flowering now tends to attract their attention. Anyways, some uh, some things to consider that uh, nature can throw some interesting curveballs at you. Sometimes that you don't even really uh, think about until you start looking at the finer details of uh, how, what would you call that, how uh, fine-tuned some of this stuff can be. That also opens up kind of a whole nother discussion, which maybe we'll have to do a farm pondering on or something, but about the, what is it we always say, not having all your eggs in one basket. I mean, we're very fortunate because we have an ama amazing amount of berry bushes, which are probably going to produce some wonderfully for us this year. So, um, you know, we're not just stuck with the apples because uh, if the apples don't produce and that's all you've got, then you're, you know, in trouble. So uh, it is kind of one of those things about the discussion about, uh, you know, having the diversity yep. on the farm. If you're a small farm, homestead, you, diversity is Key. diversity to a point, yeah. And we will talk more about that later. Diversity to a point is uh, a fantastic asset. It is. <laughs>